Hi everybody, my name is PJ Gustafson and I am a private pilot and advanced ground instructor from Houston, Texas. I am here today to give a guest contribution to Jason Shepard's M0A.com talking a little bit more about using the E6B flight computer to calculate your uh, wind speed and direction and a wind correction angle and uh, everything else that Jason uh, started talking about the other day. Jason did post a video the other day showing you how to take your true course and convert that to your true heading using the wind correction angle and uh, then thus also finding out what your ground speed will be for your flight. I'm going to take that a step further. When you're flying a cross country trip or any trip to a different destination, you'll need to take and fly a magnetic heading because that's what the compass indicates in your airplane. And in fact it actually goes beyond that. It does. It, you fly a compass heading. Now there is ways to calculate that based on you know, your flight planning. So what I will do first is show you how to get your true course all right, by plotting your route on your chart and how to use your plotter to figure out what the true course is. Uh, I'll be defining what the true course is and then the true heading all right, using the wind correction angle. How to convert that to a magnetic heading and then I will talk about how to convert it to a compass heading. However, we won't be able to do that because that does require your compass deviation card from your airplane, the airplane that you fly. So since I don't have an airplane handy, uh, we will just discuss how to do that, but we won't actually show it itself. So, let's first talk about how to get your true course. So the first step in getting your true course is to actually plot your route on your chart. Now, if you're flying in a flat area like uh, eastern Texas, like we see here in northeastern Texas to be uh, exact, this is the Dallas-Fort Worth area up at the top of the screen here that we see, this is the Waco area, and this is a kind of an outdated chart, so make sure you have a current chart when you actually do a real flight plan. But uh, in the flat areas, you can pretty much do a direct route, uh, in, with some exceptions. If there's specialized airspace, military airspace, maybe a class Bravo you have to skirt around, you might have to plot around it. If you're in a mountainous area, you want to take and keep an eye on the um, minimum altitude figures in your chart and uh, kind of avoid the big pieces of rock that uh, tend to reach up and grab airplanes out of the sky. So, uh, plot your route on your chart first. So here we're going to take and do a fictional flight from Fort Worth Spinks Airport up here in the southwest part of the Dallas-Fort Worth area and we're just going to fly almost due south but head down to Waco Regional Airport. Okay. So, start off by right, drawing a line on your chart for the routed flight. So, I'm actually taking my plotter, and I will take and put it from one airport to the other, and just draw a straight line down the chart. Now, step two, to find out your, your true course is, you can use your plotter here to take and find out uh, the true course. You find a section line, or one of the grid lines, that crisscrosses your chart indicating your latitude and longitude but you find that on your chart where it crosses your course line okay and if we see here there's one right here underneath the Fort Worth Sphinx Airport let me zoom in a little bit to get that for you okay so right underneath the Fort Worth Sphinx Airport is one of these grid lines so what you'll need to do is take and place your plotter over the course line where it intersects the grid line. Use the little point in the middle to, to where it crosses. Now on your plotter, all the uh, horizontal grid lines are on a heading of 270090 degrees. They're through due east and west. Okay. Now all these grid lines are oriented to true north, where the actual north pole is located. That is different than magnetic north. Magnetic north is not co-located with true north. We'll talk about how to convert it to magnetic north shortly. So right now to find the true course, this is going to be based on true north. We're going to take and line up our plotter with the grid lines on 270090. Now different plotters do things in different ways. Okay, uh, So some plotters you might have to take and put it on your course line and then where it crosses the grid line is your heading. But uh, in this case, on this plotter, uh, the way you do it is you take and put it on, put the 090 and 270 degrees on the grid line uh, where it crosses your course line. 
Then if you look at the quartz line down here, it looks like my quartz line is right at 175 degrees. So for this flight, my true course is 175. Okay, so when calculating your magnetic heading from the true course, you're going to take and use the formula that Jason started using the other day in his video on using the, uh, the D6B to calculate winds. We'll be doing that as part of this too, okay? The basic formula, which you can also find uh, printed on most of your uh, E6B flight computers, so it's, it's kind of gives you a little cheat sheet right there, is your true course, all right, minus the left or adding a right wind correction angle equals your true heading. You then subtract an east or out of west variation to get your magnetic heading, okay? Uh, afterwards, you um, subtract an east or out of west deviation to get your compass heading. All right, so what is this variation that uh, we're talking about here? All right, we, Jason defined wind correction angle the other day, so we understand what that is. And if you don't, go back to this blog post and uh, go ahead and take a look at that video, and then come back and finish this one. Uh, this variation here, that is the difference between your magnetic north and true north. Now, how do you figure that out? Well, it's printed on your chart, so we'll go back to that in just a minute, okay? But for the purposes of calculating our wind correction angle uh, first, we'll just go ahead and say that our winds today are 330 degrees at 16 knots and our true airspeed is 105 knots. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pause for now and give you guys a couple seconds to go ahead and try to uh, calculate this on your own using the techniques that Jason showed you the other day. Then I'll come back and show you how to calculate it here. So go ahead and pause this video, try it on your own, and then come back and we'll go through it together.